in our journey through Paul's letter to the Romans, the Christians in Rome, chapters 9 to 11 are focused on the Jewish religion. Specifically, Paul is arguing from the Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament, that Jesus is the fulfilment of the Jewish expectation of a Messiah who would save them. The passage we are looking at today is the section where Paul says that the salvation offered by Jesus as the Messiah wasn't only for the Jews. It was for all people, including the Gentiles, the non-Jews, who were excluded from the Jewish salvation unless they adopted the Jewish religion as their own. In other words, it was for us too. Paul begins with the statement from earlier on in his letter that rightness with God comes from having faith in him and not through obedience to religious law or rules. He says it is not for any of us to judge whether someone will go to heaven or will be sent into the abyss. Only God does that. It's for us to encourage people upwards. Paul says that it's not a big step for someone to get right with God. The word of faith is near, in our hearts and on our lips. Paul quotes the Old Testament prophet Joel, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is waiting for us to call. That sentence is at the end of the quotation from Joel that the prophet Peter gave on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit of God was given to the early church. 3,000 people became Christians on that day. Clearly, it was an important sentence. Paul not only refers to the Jewish prophetic writings, he also references and quotes the books of religious law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. He proves to the readers that he is completely familiar with the Jewish scriptures and uses those scriptures to show them that Jesus is the fulfilment of the Jewish religion. But faith in Jesus isn't only for Jewish people. God wants everyone to hear his voice, to know his will for their lives. He wants us to put that into practice with the help and power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus showed us the way. We follow in his footsteps, not 2,000 years ago in Galilee and Judea, but here in the year 2022 in the parish of northwest Lochaber. Paul quotes from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. The word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart to observe. The continuation of that passage, which Isabel read for us today, gives the Israelites a conditional promise. If they love the Lord, walk in his ways, and obey his commandments and instructions, then they shall live and flourish in the land. The word if implies a choice. A few verses further on, Moses exhorts the Israelites to choose life so that they may live long in the land. The people around us face the same choice, but do they know that they have that choice? Paul points out to the Romans, how can they call on someone in whom they have not believed? How can they believe in someone whom they have never heard, of whom they have never heard? And how can they hear unless someone tells them? How will anyone tell them unless they are sent to tell them? Yes, we see that around us today. So many people don't know anything about Jesus. Children don't go to Sunday school. Their parents don't believe in Jesus, so they don't tell them. Teachers tell them about Jesus, but only in the same way that they tell, they tell them about Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, atheism, and so on. Telling them about Jesus is not enough. People need to see that Jesus helps us in our present day earthly lives so that they can believe in his promises about eternal life and commit themselves to him. 
In Paul's time, everyone believed in gods. The question was, which one or which set of gods was worthy of your service? When Paul and his companions were able to demonstrate the power of God through prayer, guidance, healings and practical help, people were quick to sign up and believe. When the new Christians experienced the same help that Paul had told them about, then they were quick to tell their friends what God had done for them through their faith in Jesus. Today, the Church has set up our legal, health and social services, but instead of God getting the credit, he has been sidelined. Today, people feel that they don't need God, so they don't try to find him or ask him for help. As Paul said, why would you ask God to help you if you don't believe he exists? Paul says faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard through the word of Christ. That's the only way our congregation can grow and survive into the future. We need to hear God's word for the people around us and then tell him. First, we need to be their friends. Secondly, we need to learn of their needs and ask God how we can help. And thirdly, we need to share with them sensitively and play our part in bringing that help to that person. As I have said previously, all I can do is to show you that it works. That's what Jesus did. It's up to you whether you will play your part in the survival and future of our congregation. I'm happy to show you and teach you and help you. But if you don't take up the opportunities, then there won't be a Church of Scotland congregation in this parish. As Moses said to the Israelites, choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding tight to him, so that you may live long in the land. Amen.